So I just wrote the darn thing. And I wrote most of it on the train going back and forth to work. You know, it's like the expression, the story writes itself. That's how this one was. It was a high for me just to meet these guys again. And a few have remained friends all through the years to this day. So I wrote the story, and I was kind of nervous because I didn't know how anybody, you know, my colleagues would think of it, or George. And George loved it, being a track guy. You know, he ran track in high school, and so he was a real track fan, and obviously Boston Marathon runner and all the rest. And he gave it his blessing, and if he were here tonight, I would thank him for that. And we went and assigned a world-famous photographer named Harry Benson to take the photos of the guys at that point, now 38 years old, 20 years after high school, went to a studio. Harry Benson shot every president, shot the Beatles when they got off the plane, that in 64, you know, for their Shea Stadium concert and the rest of it. That's who Harry Benson was. It was a fantastic day to experience that photo shoot, and then we all went out, of course, afterwards. And the story took up 20 pages of the magazine. And I have to say, it's almost lived on in equal stature to the record itself, which has been one of the most gratifying things that I've ever done. And I think if there's any lesson in any of this, with these mentors and going from the Jim Dunaways and the Bill Millers through George, through the runner, through this two-mile relay and the history of it, and how long that record lasted. Um, it's just a very profound feeling that all started here at the Armory. Some kind of feeling that even with my 60 flat novice quarter in 1963, somehow it touches you and you feel something it's hard not to respond to that. And so that's what I did. And I kind of let my heart be my guide all along. And in all these things that these wonderful friends and others spoke about, including that hilarious Steve Albert story. Um, and I think informs my coaching too. Um, I love being with the kids. Our head coach at Hillsborough was here. He was in his room a bit and then had to go out. We have one of our cross-country girls who I have a hand in coaching and trying to keep up with in workouts, getting harder uh, with our cross-country girls. And as a matter of fact, the head coach actually introduced me to one of the English teachers at the high school, at Hillsborough High School, some months ago because she's a Boston Marathon runner. And she and her husband run, they run all over the world, they run marathons. And Rich, briefly the coach, he knew, you know, we'd click. So we did click. And we started talking about the kind of work she does in her classroom. And so she said she was working on the catcher on the ride. Catcher in the ride. And we got to talking, and I'm a big Salinger fan, of course. Love the catcher in the ride and the other works. And in the fall, a few months ago, she invited me to come and speak to her class. She had three honors classes, doing the catcher and the ride. And so I came in, I really prepared, I didn't want to wing it, like I'm doing now. And, um, and I wanted to make a point of reading this pivotal passage from the catcher and the ride. We're holding Caulfield after various adventures and with a the tone of the novel is said, and of course it, it's a historic book with, you know, that resonates today, certainly with anybody, but especially young people. And there's that section where he's speaking to his sister Phoebe, and after all the mission goss, so we say, he says to her, and I read it with a lot of feeling, because I wanted the kids to get it. I wanted the kids to really appreciate the point. And I'm paraphrasing, of course, and he, he says, he says, I know, I know it's crazy, but you know, the only thing I'd really like to be is the catcher and the rye and all. And by that this point, you kind of, of course, know what that means. I know it's crazy. It's the only thing I ever wanted to be is the catcher and the rye and all. 
And I remember when I was reading that to the kids, even then, a couple months ago, I thought to myself, you know, when I was holding Caulfield's age, 17, 18, you know, I felt to myself, after coming here, I know it's crazy, but the only thing I really like to be is a track writer. And that's how it turned out. Thank you very much. <laughs>